Even before I was born, I was struggling. My mother had been told by doctors that she would not be able to have children. She found out that she was pregnant, and my dad didn't believe it um, because they had been trying for so long. So when she told him, he was so surprised. When it came time for my mother to have me, they thought that I was um, not breathing because the umbilical cord was wrapped around my neck. Doctors also told Michaela's parents she was not absorbing amniotic fluid, which would cause severe nervous system issues. The doctors suggested they abort her. Instead of aborting, her parents chose to pray. Even with that, the doctors were still able to birth me. And I thank God that even through all of that, she did not decide to abort me. Growing up, not only was the devil fighting me when I was born, but he continued to fight me even as I continued to go on um, throughout life. I dealt with sicknesses growing up, such as um, chronic bronchitis, pneumonia, asthma, just things with severe allergies. And it was very um, trying at times. But not only was I affected in a physical aspect with my health, then I had people coming against me as well in school. I was bullied all throughout school, actually. They even picked on me because I grew up in church. And they even picked on me for being smart. They would call me a nerd, just different things like that. Little by little, the verbal abuse began to wear her down. I felt uh, broken. I felt sad. I felt angry. I felt a lot of emotions. And I really was just confused. And I kept asking God, like, why me? I'm being picked out to be picked on for doing the right thing. And I just really remember asking God, like, why is this happening? I couldn't understand it. The constant bullying took a toll on Michaela's self-esteem and mental health. She considered taking her own life. I was hurting, I was broken, I was lonely. I was just feeling so many emotions, some emotions I couldn't even put into words. But even then, God was sending people in my life to show me love and pour into me and just pray for me. Her family refused to allow her to give up. Her parents, grandparents, and pastors reminded her that God had a plan for her life. It didn't stop the pain of what was happening to me in that moment fully, but it did give me that hope knowing that I did have someone who had my back and who understood. In the midst of this hard time in my life, God sent a prophet um, to my church with the word, you know, directly from him. And that prophet told me that I would have a ministry in the future and that I would motivate people and that I would just help people to get through what I have already gone through. It gave me hope. I knew that I could get through the bullying. It changed my aspect because I'm like, this is only something that's gonna be temporal. It's not gonna last forever. That moment had a huge impact on my life from there on. I graduated high school. I survived, thank God. And now I'm off to college where I have so much freedom and so many opportunities. I'm not being bullied anymore. I had a person that reached out to me and they asked me to speak at their event. And I asked God, I was like, what can I talk about? And so he gave me the word perseverance. As I was writing about the people who bullied me and the situations that I had went through, I began to develop more compassion for them and it made, made it easier for me to forgive them. I began to realize that not only was I the broken person, but they were broken as well. Despite the pain that was caused, Michaela chose not only to forgive those who hurt her, but to love and pray for them. When you don't forgive people, it's like you feel like this heavy burden that you're carrying on your back, like a heavy load. And so when I actually forgave, I just felt free and I just felt more joy come into my heart. It was a beautiful moment and it was just so relieving. I was grateful to just be free. That moment, that was when my Killer Speaks was birthed, that's when my YouTube channel was birthed, and even my book. As a, a young child, I was picked on for being smart, but now I'm able to walk in that freedom of being smart. I graduated college with my bachelor's degree with honors and a year early and debt-free scholarships. God also made an opportunity for me to work at the Capitol and then later on I worked at the White House and I never thought I would even be doing all of these great things at the young age of 24. Even though you may be feeling confused, God will still make your story beautiful and you can make it. I am a living testimony. After all that I have been through with bullying, I still made it through. And I knew that it was God that had been carrying me through it all along. If I had made it all those times, I knew that he could continue to keep me. I'm so thankful for how he has redeemed my pain and my past for my future. Wow. What an what overcomer. Great story, mm -hmm. Andrew. You know, when I th think <laughs> about what she was going through, the scripture came to me from Romans 8 to 28, that mm -hmm. all things work together for the good of them that love God 
and who are called according to his purpose. All of the things that she went through, the bullying, the rejection, mm -hmm. the pain, God used it and he is using it us. for the ministry. See, God knew even then that she had a ministry in her mm -hmm. and he was going to use all of these things to perfect her in that ministry. And her perseverance too. Powerful. She didn't give up. And you know, as adults, we can say to young people, <clears throat> Oh, it doesn't matter what they think, or it's just voices, ignore it, you know. Yeah. But when, when you're in that situation, and it's then when we as adults, we don't always take our own advice, right? That's and so true. much, there's a there's a theory that it's not my own, but sometimes we make our value yeah. based upon how we perform mm -hmm. and what other people think of us. That's right. Those two things. Yeah. How am I performing? Am yeah. I successful? And what do people think equates my value? And yeah. boy, is that a bad recipe is. for us, isn't it? Because whenever you look at people to affirm you, um, there's always, always going to be someone who doesn't. And so that's why we've got to look at... And that's the one that's the loudest. That's the loudest, like right in your ear all the time. But we've got to make sure that we're looking to the Lord to affirm us. You know, he said, what are you, who do you say I am, Lord God, that I'm an overcomer, that mm -hmm. I can do all things through Christ, that there, there's nothing too hard for my God. Yeah. God, is me, God is within me and I shall not be moved. All of these wonderful mm -hmm. promises in the scripture, let's meditate on that yeah. and shut out the enemy's voice. Yeah. And I feel like this won't really make sense, but it might make sense. I feel like the older I get, I'm trying to learn not to let my feelings dictate my feelings, so to speak. And what I mean is if yeah. I'm riding the roller coaster emotionally of what I'm going through or my kids or my wife or the, the, those I care about, like our feelings from one day to the next or one hour to the next, they're just all over the place, right? Fickle. Yeah. That's why, you know, there, our feelings are not secure. And that's why we've got to secure our hope and, our, and who we are to what is secure. Mm -hmm. And that's God and his word. Yes. Never, that's never going to pass away. So let's stand on the word. That's the sure foundation that's never going to be moved. Amen. And, and congratulations to McKella for all her Excellent. accomplishments. Hello, I'm Gordon Robertson. Thanks for watching the video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more encouraging videos like this one. Welcome to the 700 Club Interactive Family, and God bless you.